In this lesson, we'll learn how to create a project from existing PTEX files, as well as how we can import PTEX textures onto channels in our existing projects. All right, so if you remember earlier in this course, we actually assembled sort of this empty project here out of multiple OBJ files. You can see all of the objects here over in the objects palette. Now, in the last lesson, we learned that when we can, when we export our PTEX textures out, we can actually include the geometry metadata in those textures. Well, with those PTEX files, if we've included that geometry metadata, let me just close this out, we can actually create a new project that has both texture and geometry in it based on those files. So uh, I tell you what, let's go ahead and create a new project here. And I'm simply going to go ahead and browse over let me go ahead and bring that in and shrink that down for you. I'm going to browse over to the project files here. And let me go ahead and just grab the referenced files folder here. And in this textures folder, you're going to see lots of different PTEX files. Now, uh, in reality here, there's everything from diffuse to specular gain information to specular roughness, even some bump information. But um, when it came to exporting each and every one of these PTEX files, the geometry metadata has been included with all of these files. So I don't want to just select all of these and import them into my new project because for certain things, say for example, the the hood, we're going to have three versions of that object that show up in my our objects palette. So um, rather than do that, I'm going to go ahead and grab just the diffuse information here. So uh, let me just come through here and select the diffuse information for the belt, the body. There's that chain and this chain. Just coming through and selecting each one of these PTEX files that has the name diffuse in it here. Grab that skirt, or that half of the skirt, rather. And we'll grab the wings. And I think I've got them all here. Yep, it looks like we've got them all. So uh, let's go ahead and hit open on these here. You'll see them all load up here into the path field in under geometry. Now, uh, we only have one option here, and Mari wants to know how to process each geometry file. And again, these are separate objects in each file, just one piece of geometry. So I'll just leave this as separate object. But we could change this over to separate geometry in one object if there was maybe multiple pieces of geometry in a single object. So let's go ahead and click OK. We'll wait for Mari to go ahead and assemble all of these different PTEX files to make its project here. But when it's done, Mari's going to have that exact same character. It's going to bring in all the geometry from the geometry or from the PTEX files as well as the texture information for every face on that geometry. All right, great. So you can see here Mari has finished creating our new project. And you can see here again we have all of our different diffuse objects here, since that's the ones we selected here. And we've basically got all the geometry loaded in here for this project. Now, granted, there were other PTEX files in there, and we could import those in manually here. But the important thing is we've got all of our diffuse information as well as geometry inside this new project. Now, this might be useful if maybe um, another artist in your pipeline had created some PTEX textures for an asset, and maybe you've been asked to take those textures and maybe make changes to those or modify them. So you could take his PTEX files, bring them into Mari, and recreate the project on your end and begin making changes to those textures here. So um, I tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Let me go ahead and hit the X button there. All right, great. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and bounce back over to this empty gargoyle project that we created earlier in this course. Now, if you remember, we created this based on just simple OBJ files. There's no PTEX involved in this project yet. Well, other than the way we actually created it, we told Mari to force PTEX, but um, none of those PTEX files are involved yet. Now, maybe you uh, have 
other artists in your pipeline and uh, maybe you are all working on different assets that are a part of the same scene. Maybe in this particular example, you've got one artist who's responsible for painting um, all the clothing and one artist who's responsible for painting uh, maybe the skin and uh, maybe another artist who's responsible for painting uh, maybe the horns and some other small details here. So maybe you've got different artists working and now you need to bring all of these P-Tex textures into the same scene uh, here inside of Mari. So um, I tell you what we can do is we can actually import the PTEX texture data from those PTEX files onto channels here. So let me go ahead and select maybe this character's hood, for example. We'll go ahead and select that, and let's bounce over to the channels palette. And I'll just go ahead and create a new channel here. And I'm going to go ahead and let's just create a diffuse channel. And we'll go ahead and let's go ahead let's go ahead and create that on all of our objects here. I know they all have diffuse information, so um, now no matter which object we select, we've always got a diffuse channel here. And let's go ahead and bring in the diffuse information here for the character's hood. So I'll just right click on that and choose import. Now, Mari's detecting that we have multiple channels named diffuse, and it wants to know do we want to import this, this information onto just the hood? or all of our objects. I indeed just want the hood, so we'll just select that one here. Go ahead and browse over to, again, those Mari project files, and in the referenced files folder under textures, we're going to use those variables that we learned about in the previous lesson to actually find this geometry file, or rather this ptex file. So uh, let's go ahead and just type in the entity and the channel variable there. And you can see it's looking now for hood underscore diffuse dot ptex, which is exactly how I exported those files out in the previous lesson. So um, now we need to tell it what we want Mari to do if it finds geometry metadata. So uh, we can tell it to either ignore that, that geometry or we can tell it to import that geometry as a new version over here for that object. So uh, I'm just going to ignore that information here and let's click OK or all rather. Now we get this uh, next dialog that comes up and there's some important information here that you need to pay attention to. Inside this PTEX texture import dialog we have uh, the checkbox here to ensure that we're importing the textures. We have uh, which piece of geometry is being targeted with those textures and the path for the PTEX file itself. But the really important information you need to pay attention to is over here. We've got here the face dimensions and Mari's telling us that yes indeed they do match. So to the right of that we have the existing number of megapixels and the incoming number of megapixels. So we can see that those resolutions match as well. Um, so in this case, as far as resizing goes, we don't have to do any resizing because the existing and the incoming face resolutions actually match. So uh, let's go ahead and hit OK on this. We'll let Mari go ahead and bring in that diffuse information. And you can see here that for the hood, in this case, the diffuse information was an easy, uh, basically an import onto this channel. So uh, we got that diffuse information in. Let's go ahead and maybe choose another object here. Let's go ahead and grab the wings. And we'll go ahead and select that diffuse channel again. And let's go ahead and right click and import again for just the wings object. Go ahead and go over to that same location, use our variables again, and you can see now we're looking for the wings underscore diffuse ptex, and let's ignore geometry, just like we did before. Now, in this case, again, we're importing the wings from this ptex file, but in this case, the face dimensions do not match. You can see here it says no. And over to the right of that, you can see that the existing megapixels was 23.0057, while the incoming is 23.0451. So uh, there is a slight discrepancy there in the resolution of those incoming pixels versus the existing pixels, uh, or rather faces. So uh, basically, Mari needs to know now, because of this discrepancy, what are we going to do? Are we going to keep the existing size? Are we going to 
uh, take the incoming size and replace the existing size with that. So you can see by default, Mari's going to try and keep the largest dimensions available per face. That means if the faces are larger in the existing file, it's going to keep those faces. But if they're larger in the incoming file, it's going to keep those. So the largest either way. Now other options we have, we can choose to resize the existing faces to the incoming dimensions. So that means that all of the dimensions of those incoming faces, whether they're larger or whether they're smaller, those are going to be the dimensions that are used. And lastly, we could come in here and choose to resize the incoming faces to the existing faces dimensions. That means we're going to keep the existing resolutions and, and forego bringing in the higher resolutions in this case. So uh, let's go ahead and just drop this down and we'll just choose resize existing faces to incoming dimensions. I know that the current project as it is before this import on this object really hadn't had any texture work done on it at all. So uh, we'll just go ahead and keep all the incoming dimensions here. So I'll go ahead and hit OK on that. Now at this point, Mari is going to tell us that uh, basically there's multiple channels in this document that resizing takes or resizing faces will affect all the channels. So um, this is a great time to point out that uh, the face size in a ptex file is not based on a, a channel selection. When we make a change to the size of a face in terms of resolution, that affects all the channels in the document, or in the project rather. So um, Mari's just letting us know that, hey, there's mul multiple channels here. This may take a little bit of time, and it's making sure we want to do that. So I do want to do that. So let's go ahead and click Yes. And you can see here that once Mari finishes resizing the existing faces to match uh, the faces that we're bringing in, it goes ahead and drops that texture down onto our diffuse channel. So with this knowledge and with this workflow, we can slowly begin piecing together the textures that have been maybe created by multiple artists in our pipeline. Now again, we're going to have to come in here and rebuild the shader information, but we have all the channel information already supplied to us, say, from these other artists in the form of an assortment of PTEX files. Now at this point, if you want to go ahead and continue rebuilding this project uh, by creating the necessary channels and then importing the PTEX texture information onto those channels, feel free. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end this lesson, and actually this is going to bring us to the end of this course. So hopefully you've really enjoyed this course devoted to creating and texturing PTEX textures here inside Amari. I know I've enjoyed it. Thanks for joining us.